Well, here we are at the end of the year, and for What's on the Bench Weekly, we might as well end this year of no Lexan with a little bit of Lexan. <laughs> Welcome back to the Skill Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's week 26 of What's on the Bench Weekly. And if you are not familiar with What's on the Bench Weekly, it's where I take you through projects that I'm working on. Stuff that's on the bench. Stuff that needs to go back on the bench. Stuff that won't ever see the bench again. It's really just me showing you stuff. I've been doing it for a while now, and it seems to be a pretty popular show. If you're enjoying it, by all means, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. This being so close to the end of the year, there's a couple of things coming up uh, that aren't are technically on the bench, but I do want to share with you. Before New Year's Eve, there will be a show all about the best builds from the forums of 2022. I've done it the last two years at least, uh, and they're very popular videos showcasing some of the talent of some of the really great builders that we have on the Scale Builders Guild forum. And I definitely recommend you check that out because not only is it a highly informative show, it's also a very entertaining show. These builders really do knock it out of the park and they've created some fantastic things and I love sharing them with all of you, so. By all means, check that out soon. It's going to be coming. Uh, but like I said, uh, this is the year of no Lexan. I say that every single year and every year it's never that because Lexan is very popular in our scale. Uh, I wanted to finish out the year with a build that uh, will propel me into the new year. And uh, it's uh, part of a new year's resolution, if you will. And that's to uh, get out of my comfort zone a little bit and do some things in RC that I'm not super familiar with. And this is one of those examples. On-road carpet racing. This is the Tamiya M08 concept chassis kit. Uh, it does not come with this body. This is an Exotech body. Uh, it's made to look like a uh, Porsche, but it is not licensed. So they call it the Stuttgart, which is where Porsches are made. So that all checks out. Uh, but this is a really great looking little chassis. Uh, it's designed to be sort of a spec class carpet racer. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much exactly why I picked it up. Um, I'm not ever going to be much of a racer. It's just not in my DNA. I don't do well in competition, say. If you've watched any of the Scale Nationals videos, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, that said, this uh, is a really great kit to put together. This was not very challenging. Anybody could handle this one. It does offer three different wheelbase options right out of the box. Uh, I've set it up to be 225 millimeters, which is sort of the mid-range one. You can go shorter, you can go longer. What do they call that? This is sort of the Goldilocks of them all, in my opinion, sort of just right. In this kit, you do not get uh, tires, you do get wheels, not these ones, but uh, this is a set of wheels and tires that I picked up for it. A nice sticky uh, compound, a uh, very soft uh, compound of tire, and uh, it, um, it should be reasonably competitive. Uh, I did go with a Hobby Wing, where's that? I did go with a Hobby Wing Z-Run brushless system combo. This is their spec 21 and a half turn setup. It's called Just Stock. <laughs> How convenient. Uh, you do get the ESC and a 21 and a half turn brushless censored motor in this kit. Uh, so it does give you everything you need. This is a 2S system. I think it could run on 3S, but uh, we'll be running 2S only. Um, to obviously meet the specifications of a spec class. Uh, but this is a really nice little car. There's, it's tiny. I wouldn't say this is 10th scale. It's more of like a 12th scale uh, mini uh, chassis and that's Tammy has done a lot of these over the years uh, it started with the M01 I imagine and now they're up to like M09 uh, the M08 is a fairly competitive chassis from what I'm told uh, and a very nice kit to build and it's a little bit outside of the realm of what I would consider Tammy kind of typically doing this has a lot more technology and a lot more thought into actual racing so um, you know, this is sort of like maybe one of their more competitive chassis in this class anyway. 
The reason I decided to do this is there is a track local to me, indoors, with a carpet setup. And uh, it's a very nice black carpet, uh, don't know much else about it, uh, haven't been there yet, but I do know that they are running spec class races on the weekends all winter long. And with there being snow and inclement weather and me being a bit soft, I do like to be inside as often as I can be in these cold Canadian winters, so why not? get an on-road car and start doing some fun racing. I will not be aiming to win. I will be aiming to have fun and do something on the weekend with RC. And of course, as we go forward, I'll be filming all of this stuff and I'll bring my GoPro to the track and you'll be able to see how poorly I do, which is to be expected. Anyway, I thought this was a nice start to the end of the year to get me ready for uh, a resolution of doing more things outside of just RC crawling. That is always going to be my love, obviously. And it's going to be the thing that I always kind of gravitate to. But if I can have a bit of fun on road, I'm gonna do that too. So there you go. Uh, if you've got any uh, good ideas for a possible paint scheme for this car, by all means, let me know. There are a couple of great Porsche liveries that I really, really like. Uh, the the pig one, uh, what do they call that? I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's a fairly good one. Um, so if you've got any ideas for how to paint this up, uh, let me know. Uh, put a comment down below. Next on the bench this week is a Christmas present that I got from my mom, courtesy of a wish list that I put together from my wife. This is a Proxon um, rotary tool, and this is to replace my Dremel, which has been known to get away from me. <laughs> the Dremel worked just fine, and it still continues to work, and I will continue to use it until it doesn't work any longer. But the biggest setback for me was that this was cordless, uh, so I was always charging batteries, which was pretty annoying. It also, I just found it to kind of be overpowered for what we need to use in our hobby. I don't really need all that power. I was gifted a new Proxon AC uh, model, so it's got a regular plug, and you can just plug it into the wall and use it for as long as you want. Uh, just as much variability on the speeds there, um, 5,000 all the way up to 20,000 RPM. So I think this one didn't go that low. Maybe it did, um, but just it's a smaller unit, less overall horsepower. Um, so I'm kind of uh, feeling like this is going to be a much better unit to use. Proxon, uh, they, these tools have been around for a long time and they do a lot of hobby grade style tools. Uh, I'll put a link down below. You can check out all the stuff they make. Uh, but they also have a nice mini bandsaw that I was kind of checking out, um, which I might get at some point, uh, especially if I start putting together that new workshop. Uh, but this is a really great tool. And um, one other thing that came with it was this uh, kind of like workbench mount for it. So it actually can be mounted in such a way that it becomes stable and then you can kind of work around it. So for polishing or cutting up a lot of material or uh, sanding or whatnot, it just kind of seemed like a nice little combination. It's got this, um, this kind of like ball mount grip uh, so you can kind of position it in a lot of different ways. I'm really excited to use this and um, it's, uh, it's something that I think is going to certainly up my sanding and polishing game. Absolute must have. One thing that's really, this is really nice, you know, the carrying case, it's got a little graphic on the side of what's in the box. So you could have a whole stack of these things all lined up and you'd go, ah, oh, that's the rotary tool. This one's far less likely to get away from me. <laughs> now, some of you may have seen me uh, make this knife before. Well, I, you know, I didn't make it, I assembled it. Uh, but now I get to do another one. <laughs> Rebecca got me, it's my knife. And this is a Japanese kit. Uh, customize us to be your best fit. Uh, this is pretty cool, this one. Um, you can actually kind of uh, carve the handle to your specification so it fits your hand perfectly. Uh, and it includes everything you need to assemble a new knife. So, um, you know what? Let's make a knife right now. Why not? Isn't this so fun? <laughs> Let's see, what do we have inside here? Ooh, yes, it's my knife. It's my knife. Maybe that's how they meant it to be. Uh, we've got some sandpaper, we've got all the metal bits to put it together, the blade is obviously in there, and there's your two pieces of handle inside. Don't forget that. Oh yeah, this is gonna be awesome! 
be able to totally make that fit to my hand. Spectacular. Okay, let's build a knife. Poster creation on Instagram. Ooh la la. All right. Assembly diagram. Well, this should take absolutely no time at all. Now, of course, you probably need a carving knife or a whittling knife in order to carve the knife uh, handle. <laughs> so I wouldn't recommend this for your first knife kit. <laughs> Maybe your second. All right. What do we have to do first? Put this in here. This in here. There we go. So far, so good. Uh, we need... Be sure to mount the disc spring washers correctly. Yeah. Better make sure we do this right. Okay, so washer, spring washer, and then we need the blade, which I bet you is mighty sharp. Rebecca got this knife kit for me at the same place that she got me the other one. And so I'll put a link down below. I don't know if you have Lee Valley where you live. Oh my gosh, this is sharp AF. Whoo, yes. All right. Blade goes in. And we need a this call it needs to go in there. Another spring washer. And the next washer goes on top of that. Mm -hmm. And then handle on. And they give you a little handy tool for screwing down all those things. Nice. I bet you didn't think you'd be watching me build a knife on this episode. But aren't you glad I am? <laughs> All right. So here we go. Uh, new, new knife. This one's definitely, I'm going to want to do a lot of sanding to get those uh, wooden handles contoured properly. Um, but uh, there you go. That is a knife. And what a knife. Cool. That was easy. Now we have a new knife. Uh, if you ever see a knife kit, uh, please let me know. Uh, I'm always keen to build another one. Because these are fun. Cool. That is... That is really quiet. I can't believe it. It's fantastic. So that's it. Uh, thank you so much for watching this last final episode of the year of What's on the Bench Weekly. Uh, like I said, if you're enjoying this show, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. I will most definitely be doing a full year's worth of this show next year, so please stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again next week, and Happy New Year! <laughs>